All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Well, we're back here with another Corona Geek, where we talk all about mobile app development, desktop app development, and connected TV app development using Corona SDK. Today, we've got a great lineup. Uh, we've got it's all plugins all the time. We've got Warren Fuller, who's going to talk talk about his Game Center plugin. Hey, Warren, thanks for joining us. Thank uh, you for Long time watcher, first time uh, panelist. Yeah. It's great to have you. And also, we are going to look at, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Scott. Scott Harrison has uh, a couple of plugins, uh, things that we're going to share out. Uh, he's going to be in listening only mode, so I'll be uh, sort of the surrogate for that, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Batum it was supposed to join us. I'm hoping that uh, we, we don't have the time zone stuff mixed up, but uh, he will hopefully join us and talk about some of the things that he's got going on. And if not, I know Stephen uh, had said earlier before the show started that uh, he's got some some items that he can talk about as well. And Ed, I think you may maybe need to give us an update on Eat because I think the last time that we all got together, uh, we ran out of time. So uh, we got lots of stuff to talk about. So so joining us here, we've got Stephen Johnson, we've got Sergey Lurg, uh, SpiralCodeStudio.com, we've got uh, Mike Hempfling from CraveCreative.com, Warren Fuller. Warren, we, do you have a, a .com that we can th shout out? Yeah, Animonger.com. Okay, there you go. And then we've got Noah uh, from uh, Chunky Apps and uh, MobileOctopus.com. And uh, we've got Roaming Gamer, or Ed Mar a.k.a. Ed Marina. <laughs> we've got Rob from the forums, uh, Daniel Williams. Daniel, what, what, what are you doing these days in terms of, uh, I know we've got That's So Panda. I guess that would be the one that we could throw out there. He's on and GameBuildingTools.com. And then, and then we've also got Scott Harrison, and, and Scott is uh, – in the forums all the time and also uh, an avid plugin developer these days. So got a good panel going on. So Warren, tell us about this um, game center plugin that you developed because it's, it's in the marketplace right now. And uh, I think you, you had some, you wanted to demo some code and uh, kind of walk us through what it does. Yeah, I just want, I wanted to point it out in the store cause it's a little hard to find right now. Uh, you said you're going to send the, uh, Corona marketing team my way so we can change some of it but here I'll show it in the store so uh, I guess I just push this green button yep you had a little work and uh, so is everybody seeing my desktop now it's starting to come through there it is yep all right great so uh, this is the Corona marketplace and this is the game section and so um, here are all the game plugins. There's Sergey's recent one, which is the Google Play Game Services, which is awesome. Uh, you got the the Legacy Game Center here, and then you got this Animonger plugin. What's that? That's uh, some kind of anime distribution, something. It's a little it's a little confusing. I I know um, Michael Waller probably was doing me a solid by putting my big graphic in there, but I think it's confusing right now the way it is. So what it is, is a game kit plugin. And the game kit, for those of you who don't know, is uh, Apple's framework for the Apple Game Center. So if you click here, then you just activate it. Uh, here's the documentation. The documentation's on my website. So I'm supporting um, all the features of Game Center up to iOS 7. So I wanted to go, I didn't want to go too far into the future just to be able to support some of that backwards compatibility I know uh, some people are still running seven. I haven't seen the latest charts, but as soon as that starts to fall off, I'll bump it up to iOS 8. But uh, it's, it's the full plugin except uh, voice chat. And if uh, people want that, then I'll, I will add it. I just um, I haven't gotten around to doing that part and I wanted to release it because it was taking a while. And I just wanted people to... All the other features, which is uh, all the Game Center features, which is uh, achievements, challenges, leaderboards, scores, um, real-time gameplay, which was uh, the feature that I needed, and that's why I decided to make this plugin, and turn-based gaming. It's, it's all the, the support for all that. So if you look at the overview, here's the Game Center uh, uh, overview of, on the Apple website. And so um, what the, uh, 
the, the reason why I made the plugin is because uh, I, I think it's, it's really cool that, that Apple and um, Android offer these, or Google rather, offer these free services for indie developers. So it's, it, and, and as well as um, offering you these free services, they, they also tend to feature games that use their services. Uh, you're, mo you're much more likely to, to, to get that advantage. So um, that's it. That's one of the main reasons. And the other reason is, is that uh, I've seen, I used to work in Flash and I saw a few Flash games end up having to pay people to play their game. So backend services is security is hard if you have to roll your own. And uh, also the, the prices are high if you're using a third, third party device. If your game takes off, then you could end up uh, making far less money than than bringing in than you are paying out for back-end services. So just as an indie, I think it's a really good idea to be able to to experiment and um, uh, put put just bang something out, you know. And they, and the, these services now provide quite a bit of what you need in a game for for uh, for a multiplayer game and and all your leaderboards and challenges and all that stuff. So. Um, also, it was the second requested feature on the Corona requested list, which is uh, why I decided to just go ahead and code it myself after trying to lobby. Walt, when Walter came to Los Angeles, that's where I'm at. There was a, uh, the, I think we only had one user group meeting and Walter was there. So I showed up and I was lobbying him heavily and he was like, yeah, I know we, we need to put more energy into that, but we, we're trying to just build out core features and all that stuff. And, and then uh, Charles, I don't know if you remember, but you actually had Walter on for a question and answer period. And yeah. uh, I, I was the guy who was asking, when is Game, you know, when is Game Center, when is, uh, when is Google Play Game Services going to be fully supported? That was me. All those questions were, were coming from me. So, right. And I was thinking, this is a no brainer. And none of the other uh, frameworks also support it. Like I, before I brought, uh, uh, decided on Corona as my 2AD game engine, I looked at all the other ones and they don't support them either. I'm just thinking, what, why, why is this? This is supposed to be for indies. Let's, you know, we need something that's free that we can turn around quick, just like Corona is, you know, Corona, you can turn around quick. It's free. So, so now it's great that there's support for that on this side with, uh, with the Google play game services and, and also the plugin that I wrote, which is the uh, game kit, which is really just the Apple game center plugin. So that rant done. Um, let me I, had, I had a question kind of for the panel. Questions? Yeah. Yeah, I would just one for the panel really is, is, is does anybody use the voice chat? No, I guess everybody's on mute. I'm on mute, but I just want to say that personally, I'm excited about a lot of these plugins that are coming out, including Warren's here, but uh, I'm way behind the curve on like, learning to use these things and, and actually you know it's nice to have these features excellent but for me part of the time is just spent like catching up and finding something to apply it to so i want that to sound positive hopefully it does uh it's good that they're there you know i'm always, I'm always uh, like i speak and people are like oh, that doesn't sound right. I, I think that's the case though in, in all of these these plugins right i mean yeah, uh, yeah. Even, even when even in the in the realm of monetization i mean there's all these these now there's all these monetization plugins but i i know i know of a few developers that i've talked to who are like i want to use all of them right but but i don't think that's the i think that's an edge case that's not necessarily the mainstream right most people are going to have an experience with one or two but not on all of them so same thing here. We've got uh, some really great plugins like the Google Play Game Services, um, but you know, uh, not everybody's going to have experience with that. Yeah. So the yeah, short well, answer uh, is it's not yet, but as soon as I can. How's that? Sure, sure. It's it's. I mean, even if you're just using them for leaderboards and achievements and challenges and all that stuff, it's worth integrating. Is is even and I'm to pitch my own product here. I'm actually providing more of those features. Like you don't have challenges with the original uh, Corona plugin and they were in a hurry and I realized they were supporting it and they had a limited amount of resources to actually apply to that. And they, they, and then things just advanced and they weren't able to maintain the new features. So in iOS seven, a whole bunch of major features came out for game center. So I figured that that was the best 
want to support and going back, you can do challenges, you can do leaderboards, you can do achievements, even if you don't use the multiplayer features at all, which is what originally why I was attracted to it. And that was the second uh, most popular requested feature was real-time gaming on, on Game Center. Well, I mean, for me too, those are extremely interesting. I mean, it's so hard to get that kind of functionality on your own, to have it provided in this format as a plugin is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see all these uh, pieces of functionality that are being added onto, the, onto Corona, uh, things that are not necessarily core, but now they're, you know, people have asked for them and the community can kind of step up and, and, and add value to them. Um, I, I think you, you mentioned Flash, you know, I, back in the day I worked for Macromedia and one of the things that just struck me back then was that they had, they had this whole um, extensions or, or pl plugins or, or add-ons, whatever you want to call them. They had these uh, that the community developed and then they would yeah. dump these in, you know, and, and it was like, it was fantastic because now you've got like, uh, you know, the, the core engineering team can focus on the, the core product and the community can build out whatever they need. Yeah, exactly. I, that's the community that I came from. That's how I actually learned how to program. I started out life as an animator and I kept asking for features, asking for features. And then when they opened up extensions in flash, I said, okay, this is, I had done, I mean, I'd done some scripting and things like that. Cause I worked in movie effects like shell scripting and such like that. But I didn't know how to full on program like OOP programming or, uh, you know, writing classes and all that stuff. And that's what pulled me into that. That was a siren song. Extensibility just kept edging me closer and closer to becoming more and more a programmer and less and less of an artist, which is, is ironic because you can only hold so much in your brain. The better I get at programming, the less I do art, the more more that animation training is dis disappearing it's it's pretty funny if i get really good i'll probably even have a hard time and start talking to women but it <laughs> just it's just i mean it's 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 amazing how you can only hold a certain amount of expertise in your brain uh, uh well 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 mention um uh, mentioning code do you did you have some demos or something that you wanted to show us yeah so so to sort of address ed's question uh, or 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 situation about learning this stuff is that I always like examples when uh, I'm using a plugin like sample app. And that's what I really liked about Corona was I'm first getting started were all the example applications. So I wrote a tester app. It's not pretty. It's, it's a wall of te uh, text, but so here you can, you can get it here on my website, but I, I'm going to show it to you in a second. So the, I've open sourced the code for all this. And I know this just looks like a wall of text buttons and that's what it is. But what, it, what it'll do is, is that you can, once you set up your app on Game Center, um, yeah, Game Center, you can uh, just download this code and plug in your, app, your, your ID for your application. And then you can just compile this and start running and, and playing around with all the methods in GameKit. Because this is, each one of these buttons is set up. So I think what I'll do is- Okay. The funny thing, funny thing uh, when I was making the Google Play Game ser Services plugin, I was using uh, this application to uh, prove backwards compatibility of the plugin with your app. This oh, okay. It, what, you're, are you talking about the one that I wrote for Google Play Game Services or? The, the GT tester. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that was, I also wrote another one for the, the legacy code now. Yeah, that Sergey just mentioned. That's great. And you know, when I get some time, I may do the same level for your the new Google Play, because uh, I just find that kind of thing very useful to get up and started. Just getting an example. So, right. so uh, let me see. Let me fire this up. And uh, okay, so this is my uh, iPod Touch tester uh, desktop here for the iOS device. So I tried to click on it in on the desktop there, yeah, that doesn't work, of course. Okay, so it should log in, there it is. So each one of these buttons is, represents a method in GameKit. So uh, if, for instance, you, you see this send G, uh, G Game Center notification, we just click on that and it pops up a notification in your game. So that's that's a cool feature that was added in iOS 7. You can actually do custom 
notifications to your users within or your, your players actually. And so I, I could go through all these menus, but I, a lot of it just does trace out, which I'm not, I don't, I'm not hooked up to, but I'll, I'll just step through them very fairly quickly. You can do challenges. Here's all the challenge methods. Um, and then I'll show you later how they relate in the documentation. So scores and leaderboards, each, so each menu, uh, does a certain section of that feature. So if you're just interested in challenges or you're just interested in achievements, you can just download this and get it going and then just look at all the methods in the test code because it's open source or that you don't need to mess around with and it's all done in separate modules as well. So you can just ignore all this player's menu, retail, you know, real-time game, turn base, all that stuff if you would like. I mean, otherwise you can look at the whole thing and learn the whole API. So um, I think what I'm going to do, just in the sake of time, I don't, I don't know how busy, uh, how much time has gone by so far, but I'll show you a quick example of two devices running uh, real time because uh, that was the, the most popular feature. Well, you so, know, you know, going back to what Ed was, Ed was talking about before about learning all these different things, uh, you, you know, you you just touched on this idea that while you may use Google, I mean, uh, you might, might may use Game Center, uh, you may not necessarily explore the whole API just because you don't need it. Um, exactly. So exactly. I, think, I, think, I think that's important to, to, to just to say out loud because a lot of times I know personally I feel kind of, you know, we, we put our, we kind of put our developer, um, our, you know, our developer chops to the test or whatever and we, we want to think that we know as much as possible, but at the same time, it's like, well, why learn the whole thing if you don't have to? Exactly. Yes. And then, and then this gets you right up to speed. Even if you don't like the code example that I, that I gave, at least you can see how it works and you can modify it to your heart's content. So, uh, so here's, I'm going to just launch. Now this is the second device and it just, it just logged in. And uh, so now I'm going to invite the, 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 the seven player, the iOS seven player. So I'm in the real time on, on the iOS nine here. So I'm registering the listener right now on this side, but I don't need to because that's just listening for invites. But I, I just did it on that side just to show you and I'll, I'll show you again when we come here. So um, I just clicked on the real time listener. A lot of this is, is spit out with trace statements and I, it doesn't really show too well in this environment. But if you're on your own computer, you're going to get trace statements for all of this. So uh, I'll pop up the Apple Game Center UI. And that's weird. It just, uh, that's strange. It just changed the dynamic. Uh, it must be a feature of QuickTime that's going on there. But and that it figures, I guess it's a demo. But anyway, I'm going to invite, invite a friend. Okay, what's going on here? Let me start this over. Invariably. Yeah, I, I did a test on this just before, I, and it worked perfectly. Well, that's a, you're running it through the QuickTime uh, player, right? So. Yeah. Let me just quit that. To every participant on Corona Geek, once you have something to present, uh, oh, uh, everything, every time something goes wrong. That's right. Live demos are just that way. Okay. No, now it's stuck in this other mode. Interesting. <laughs> Great. Uh, well. But that's just showing your app, right? Then, isn't that just displaying your app? What it's doing is um, it's popping up the menu for the, oh, I see what happened. I actually just got turned landscape. I must have bumped the device. Okay, cool. So here we are. So I click invite on the device and now I select. So do you, do you see what happened there? I was just stuck in landscape mode and it wasn't, it wasn't working properly. Right. I don't know why I did that, but uh, click on the seven. So th this is this other device here. This one here is iOS seven. This one is iOS nine. So I invite the player and I just send them a quick little message, whatever it is. Hey, let's play. Click on the invite. 
and now it now it's popped into the game the the real time game screen now of course this isn't very exciting it's just set up for for traces so if i do uh, a little sample text blob which is what you would be sending as your your packet and send it then you see on the other device the ios 7 device receive that so then i can just respond to that and of course this is going to be happening at real time speeds not just typing in but um yeah, so so that I mean that that's the long that's the that's a very quick demo of all the things that the app can do, um, and it, it would probably be better if you just downloaded the code and um, you know messed around with it yourself. Uh, let me show you where where the code is on GitHub. So you can just go to my site and click on the GK Tester iOS. And you can click on the, uh, it talks about how to set it up on Game Center. But, and here's, this, here's the actual code itself on GitHub, on my GitHub repository. It's just taking for a while, because I guess we're talking. But anyway, so here's the whole application. All you gotta do is download it, and then plug in. Uh, I tell you the actual lines of code that you need to put in uh, your information for your application to get it up and running and compiling. Will you will you go ahead and throw a link in the chat just so that uh, we'll have that for later? Sure. Once I figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I can send you also all the links if you'd like. I've got a, a list of all these links. But uh, unless there is there any questions? Yeah. So let's open it up to the panel. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Very cool. Oh, thank can't you. Wait. Yeah, I can't wait to. Um, uh, to try it, to try the multiplayer. Very awesome. So Scott's, Scott's asking about uh, Apple TV, and I'm assuming he says Mac, so I'm assuming he's, uh, you know, desktop. Yeah, he, I, think, I think if it's the same Scott, is it Scott 44 rules? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, yeah. He asked me uh, in the forums if I, if I was going to support that. I got to see how it goes right now. I don't think I can, it's hard to tell. Um, I think somebody said that we need a feature request that we can tell who's downloading the plugin or how often or not exactly who, but how many downloads we're getting, how popular it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to wait and see how this one goes. Um, this one took me a while to do. Uh, and then there was a fair bit of wait in the store for the approval because there was a small little bug. Um, uh, on the Corona server side that that took a while for it to release. But uh, yeah, I want to wait and see first how this, this does. And I also have to release my own game. My own game is I've been working on for two years. So it's going to be a strategy game and it's going to involve, it's going to actually use this plugin and also now Sergey's plugin. So uh, it's going to be a real time strategy board game. So I got to get that done and launch first because that was the main reason why I did it. But after that, Sure, if people request features like that, then uh, yeah, I'm more willing to support it. Excellent, excellent. And, and I guess, I'm assuming, I mean, the, the, the Apple TV thing seems like it would, I mean, is it a whole separate API? Is it a whole separate endeavor? I mean, how's that, you, you, or do you even know? I haven't even looked into it yet. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it, I don't, I don't even know if I'd have to make a separate plugin. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it would work. I, I maybe just be able to include it in this in this plugin. It's just another feature. Like, oh, if you're using Apple TV, if you're using it for TV OS, then it's this way. If you're using it for the watch, it's like this. It may be as simple as that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So is the uh, is the real time game? Is that just between two two players, or is that can that be two? You know, plus whatever. A bunch. It, it's two to four if you're using it through the game center feature, uh, the servers. But if you have your own server, you can actually, um, I think it's, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's up to 20 or so. So, but you're, but at that point, if you have your own server, then you're probably going to want to, you're, you're savvy enough to, to have your own uh, back end solution anyway. But I guess you just want to want to take advantage of the, um, the features that they offer. And also, you know, people trust Apple more, I would think, than just a third-party server. So, you know, 
uh, there is that advantage. But yeah, to answer your question directly, it's one, to, it's two to four players for real time. And is that the same for the turn base? Can you have like a, when you, if you have like a board game like you're talking about, is that, you know, like you have four to eight or whatever players and each person takes their turn as it goes around? Or is it just, is that just back and forth? In the turn base is actually a lot more. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's like 24, but I can't remember exactly. But it's a, it's a considerable more, uh, more players. Interesting. Oh. And oh, and, and to add that, you know, the there are some known bugs with um, the turn-based system that Apple has on iOS seven, and so I've already figured out those uh, those those bugs, and I wrote workaround methods into the plugin. So you can it's supposed to be all event event based, but sometimes those events never fire. So I have a polling system that I wrote into the plugin. So you have features that you wouldn't have if you were just using the raw API. So, and it's all in Lua, so it's a lot easier to use from the Corona SDK side. Cause, cause I was getting some, uh, cause I'm also interested in the turn based side. And it, in, during my tests, it just wasn't coming up. And I did a lot of searches online and people are having similar problems. And the solution is just, you just create your own polling system. So you can just kick that off and, and, and I've, it, it, I can show it to you in the, it basically it's in the documentation so and also in that sample gk tester app i've also written uh comments where there are problems like oh i this is the solution for this problem that i'm having with the particular framework and here's how to solve it so i've actually put notes in the code itself i don't know if i, I can probably can't find one right off hand but um so does that does that answer your question, Mike? Yeah, I think so. And uh, so, when do you when do you think you're going to launch your game that you've been working on for two years? <laughs> well, when this this uh, this end of this month, but we'll see. Cool. Hopefully, just try to get it out before the holidays. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. I was hoping to get it out before iOS 10, but uh, if, unless I launch this evening, it's not going to happen. I guess it's coming out tomorrow, right? I have said. That's that's the plan. That's what they've said. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, you're still screen sharing with us, so if you wanna if you wanna stop yeah. that, then we'll go back to the normal view here. Um, okay. Let me let me pull up. Uh, it doesn't look like Badham's here yet. So he he had said that. Um, let's see. Uh, exit full screen here so am i not sharing anymore I, it's hard to tell uh you're still sharing it uh, yeah so how do i do that i click you just have to click that same button again that same green button and then say share screen again or uh, i should not share screen uh let's see here um nope you're still i still see your screen right oh stop share the big red button gotcha okay there, there you go okay um, so let's see here. We had Badham was going to do, he had elite achievements, elite comics, uh, elite language, our Lang, uh, elite messages, elite options, elite sounds. So he's, <laughs> he's been working on some stuff, but he's not, uh, he's not here yet. So we're going to, we're going to look at what uh, Scott had put out first. So here, let me, let me just grab, I'm going to grab links and kind of drop them into the chat. So here, let me, let me do this first. I'll grab this one here. So here's a forum discussion where he was talking about um, a few items that he's worked on. Uh, these are basically, and you know, Scott, you can chat in here and correct me if I'm wrong. Google, Google Play game services. Is a, here's a GitHub example of a tic-tac-toe. And then also one for game kit. Um, so if you need a sort of a, a an example, a, a kind of a, a game example, uh, apart from the, the, the demo that Warren just showed us, uh, then you could have those there. Um, and then what was the other one here? Let me find it. Um, the other one were, was a couple of videos. I'm just gonna drop the links in the, in the chat um, just because I don't think that the, I don't think that the playback here is going to be that great, but I might mix them in um, when I go to redo this video or go to publish this video. So, so one of them 
is uh, a, a view of the tic-tac-toe, the game kit. So showing an example of that. Um, that way you can kind of see, see what you're going to, you know, what you should end up with uh, when you're done. And then the other one was, let me see, this other one here was, um, I'm having to remind myself as well, that the other one, well, yeah, it was a touch ID test. So uh, apparently Scott's working on a touch ID plugin, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Nope, oh, now he's screen sharing with us. Awesome. I love it. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, so so you can see the code there on the right. Basically, what he's what he's doing um, is the first time he goes through, he's basically gonna he's gonna do it wrong, and then the nut the next time he'll do it right. So he's including his uh, Touch ID plugin. Um, so there you go. It says. Uh, What does it say? Because I said so. So when you get the because I said so, which one was that? That's the show. It's just showing it. Uh, when he taps. And then one, he's got one here where it fails because he uses a different finger, right? A finger that's not registered. And then when he does it the correct way, then it comes up and, you know, authorizes it. Yeah. There we go. So that's pretty cool. I, again, I'm, I'm really super excited to see these plugins come online uh, because of, just because of things like that. Things where, you know, adding Touch ID to Corona without having to, you know, include it as part of core or something like that, right? It's just like, hey, yesterday we didn't have it, today we have it. You know, as that, I think those types of use cases for plugins are pretty cool. You know, the modularity, that's the, that, that is a huge factor. And that's what I really like about Corona because you're not dragging along. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you downloaded any 2d unity apps, but they're pretty big and I don't, I don't want to slag off unity, but I noticed that they're, when you're just doing 2d, you're not, you're not taking advantage of the fact that unity does 3d. It's a big application just for 2d and, and Corona does this near native size and near native speed. It's, that's what I really like about it. And the fact that it's going modular like this makes it even smaller for whatever application you want to put out. It's really. Yeah. Cool. Um, this is Rob. Let me add into that. Um, you know, it's, a lot of people are always worried about their, you know, app size and particularly there's, you know, a lot of people trying to market um, in countries where data rates are really high and, uh, phones are older and don't have a lot of storage. So it's important that we do our best to keep our core lean and mean. And, you know, not everybody needs Touch ID, so why blow up the core with it? I, I mean, that's, that's kind of the great thing about our plugins is you build up what you need and then, you know, we'll try to keep the core as thin as possible. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. That's, that's awesome. So Scott uh, basically says this was submitted on Sunday, uh, which means you know it should be in the queue now. And then he's provided a link to the docs. So if you guys want to grab that, I'll also put it in the show notes as well. But uh, yeah, excited, excited about this. Um, okay, well, again, Badham's not here. So I think we're just going to go ahead and move on. Ed, uh, did you have anything that you wanted to say about your EAT tool? Or? Where am I? There uh, I am. I can't uh, yeah, that, just a brief announcement. Um, so I, I don't remember the last time we talked. Was it like a month ago? I uh, had holidays and stuff in here, right? So yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. It's been at least two or three weeks. Yeah. Okay. Feels like I'll, I don't know. I've been so busy. It feels like forever. But um, last time I was on the day hangout, the morning hangout, the however you want to think about it, the normal Corona Geek hangout. Uh, I had uh, I think I was announcing the release of Eat Lean. And I said that the price was uh, $9.99 introductory, introductory price. Uh, that is going to end, the introductory price is coming to an end in one week. So next Monday, it will be over. And at that time, the price is gonna go up to $19.99. So uh, besides the announcement that To it, which means that I'm adding new plugins as they come along. So uh, 
thanks a lot, guys, for just keeping me busy as heck with your many, many, many plugins. <laughs> I'm actually not that far behind. I think I'm about four or five plugins behind, uh, and that's including those that are not quite officially released. So um, uh, people can go to my last uh, forum's announcements, and I'll give uh, Charles, I'll give you a link on that, uh, where I say what I'm going to be adding next. But, so, uh, uh, let me, well, let me ask you this. Well, so since we're here, not in the forums at the moment, but uh, mm -hmm. how how many plugins do you plan to support? I mean, if, everything. If, if the store blows up and there's you know, a hundred thousand. Oh, oh I, hear, I hear what you're saying. So if they're if tomorrow the sudden we're we're like we're about I think we're at like 90, 90, 95 plugins now, yeah. including some of the ones that are getting ready to be released. So. Uh, and then if tomorrow we blip, we had 200 plugins. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I'd give Warren's answer. Uh, Warren or, or, or Warren gave my answer, which was a great answer, Warren, which is I would watch adoption rates mm -hmm. and then I would focus on those things that were most requested. So, uh, you know, it needs to be adopted. You guys out there listening right now, if you want this tool to continue to grow and improve, adopt it, use it. That's all I'm saying. I mean, clearly, if, if you don't want to use it, then don't use it, and then it won't matter to you anyways. But uh, at this point, I'm pretty much adding everything. That's the short answer, I guess. Everything's okay. going in right now. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and you said that's the, the, the introductory pricing ends in a week? Yeah, so that price ends in a week. What's the, what's the date on that? What would the date be on that? That's a great question. I should, the 19th. 19th. So on the 19th, the price goes up. Bada bing, bada boom. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and has there been any new development since the last time we talked about this on the show? Is that, is uh, yeah, sure. So um, uh, more plugins. I put in more plugins. I mean, that's the, uh, the link that I'll give you. But uh, the only other thing that was big was uh, two items actually. I changed uh, the plugins page a little bit so that it gives you an indication when you select the plugin as to whether or not. Um, geez, why don't I just show you? I'm sorry. Um, so, like Google Play Game Services, that's in there now and all that? Uh, Google Play Game Services is going to be in the next release. Okay. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. The new Google Play Game Services. Right, right. Old Google Play Game. I, yeah, that's totally in there. Uh, let's get this up here. Come on, where are you? I don't want to share my camera. Do the infinite camera thing. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm sorry, I'm doing a video encoding on my computer at the same time as I'm online here, and it's consuming all 12 of my CPUs. So, Yeah, we can see that. All right, good. So I don't know if I'm lagging out here or what. Uh, okay, let's go to plugins. So basically, on the plugins page, there's this list that shows you what you've selected. And if you add something here and you haven't configured it yet, you'll get this little bubble with a counter in it. And the counter basically tells you that there's four things that you haven't configured. And if you click it anywhere now, Mike, Mike asked me to change that to a full clickable button. It'll pop up this dialogue that tells you basically, gives you a summary of what the problem is. It's basically saying you need to configure this and to do so, go to the advanced settings and then the monetization of the plugins tab. Uh, it also tell you if there's a couple of here, like Polefish. Polefish conflicts with a lot of different uh, plugins. And the reason is, is because it conflicts with the um, Google Play, uh, the Game Center plugin which a lot of these plugins sort of like require, is, is, that, is that right? Uh, a lot of these plugins require another plugin from Google, and I can't remember the name of it. And Polefish has a conflict with that. It was the, there's the AdMob and there's the Google Analytics. Is, is that what you Yeah, so basically what this is showing you here is if it's got a little X, that means you've got a conflict and they're not gonna work together. Hmm. So uh, you're that's out of luck. That's, that. that's helpful. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I actually, when I first did this, there was only like one where I was sure it was going to conflict, and I tried like uh, AppLovin and Polefish together, and there was no note in the docs, but then they still didn't work. I'm like, why is that not working? And then I sort of puzzled it back, and it says, oh, well, Polefish conflicts with AppAdMob, and AdMob is actually 
the plugin that's used for AdMop is the same one that's required by a bunch of other ones to do some some other whatever heavy lifting they're doing there. So it's a, uh, anyway, it's kind of like a secret, not a secret, but uh, you sort of have to pay attention to know what's going on there. Uh, what's the other thing here? I don't need to show you my screen anymore. Or is it stop? The other thing that I added was um, Noah uh, used my tool, and I think I talked about this on After Dark, and uh, I had a piece of code that I generated that was called Eat Money, because I got to have eat and everything there. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, Eat Money was this gi uh, giant dynamically generated module that would initialize the plugins, uh, the monetization plugins you were using, based on which plugins you had selected. And um, let me see if I can summarize this so it makes sense. Most of the monetization plugins take a listener argument. But I have found over the years that having the listener in the same sort of like uh, location as the where I do the initialization isn't really the way I want to do it. What I would really like to have is sort of a, a way to send those events out to any module in my code. Now, that's totally achievable today, but most new programmers, new developers, they don't, they don't kind of like know how to do that. So Eat Money basically did that. What it, what it did was it created a custom listener that then would send out an event with the name of that provider uh, saying, hey, I just got an event from this provider. If you want to do something with it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. And then you could create listeners anywhere you wanted in your code listening for events like watched video or started uh, st showed ad or something like that. Long story short, uh, Noah said, what, what are you doing here? I think, I think those were pretty much his exact words. You're here right now. <laughs> I mean, <yep. laughs> like, I don't know what you're doing, but this is not the way we do things around here. <laughs> Get with the program, man. <laughs> so I, I recorded I that. Was exactly those words, but <laughs> So now it produces examples more in the vein of what you would see on the Corona website. And I, I give full usage. Uh, everything is basically spelled out. So this it's actually is, more than it was before. Well, uh, well uh, I don't know. I, this is great. I, I, I like to show us your screen because I see, um, I can tell there's refinements, right? There's things, I mean, it changes each time. I love how it just, it's, progressively getting tighter and you know the, yeah, the, the I'm, I'm trying device. to improve this as we go along i mean i don't want to keep talking because i know other people have stuff to say but uh i'm getting feedback from people that are on right here in in the hangout and i'm getting feedback from other folks uh, various ways and i read it all and i apply it as i can uh and so each of these things is incremental and based on input input from other folks cool good good okay. It's the way it should be. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I use this tool personally, but if the people who have purchased this tool, if they can't use it, then that needs to be fixed. Right? Yeah. Hey, um, anybody else on the, on the panel got anything they want to want to say? Rob, did you have anything you wanted to throw in? I can show my recent small project. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, an application that I made, made on a local web event about Tetris. Let me. Uh, oh yeah. My screen. <laughs> we were looking at this this morning. That it was it's hilarious. So you're you're what's this what's this local event that's that's happening? Is it uh, like a conference or is it just a, a meetup group? It's a, or it's a small conference for. Uh, develop, developers in my city. It's we had, I don't know, maybe twenty people, maybe something like this. Nice. Uh, let me show you the code. So this is like a crazy Tetris, not Tetris. This is not Tetris. So it, it you said this morning that it, all it has to do is make a line. Does it have to make a line of any any colors? Yeah. Uh, once there are eight. Uh, the terminals on the line, uh, they will pop up. Let me show you the lines, uh, which detect the uh, collision listener. There are rows, and where do I make them invisible? Here. 
if I make them visible again, you can see the lines and once they interact with eight of the cubes, uh, they all pop, as you can see. So I made this uh, game uh, live on stage while I was presenting. It took me uh, a little more than uh, half an hour, but it was quite fun. I was like, I was coding from the scratch and I didn't realize how slow it would be uh, because when you are uh, writing something like this on your own, on your computer without having to uh, describe every line of code or almost every line of code, it moves so fast, but uh, the stage moves so, so slow. But for me, it felt like, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe because of all the interaction with the people and the stuff. And I have this little game on GitHub. Let me show you the link. If you want to try it, to play it. Here is the link. GitHub, Lerk, not Tetris. So this is fun. You can give it to people who want to learn Corona and try for some samples, maybe that sort of stuff. So you've got uh, you've got collision detection. You've got uh, touch interactions, right? You can. I saw that you you clicked and drug stuff around. Um, your your count somehow you're counting how many blocks you have in a line. Mm -hmm. That's all in the uh, event listener on collision. I add elements and I uh, check if I have eight of them right here. So if you, uh, no not here. Where do I check here? I check. So if I have a number of list equals to the cage width. Uh, I remove all elements that are collided. Is there anything else, any, anything else uh, concept-wise, you know, that, that people would get out of this? Well, it also shows very basic object-oriented programming approach. Mm. That sort of stuff. Okay. Very cool. Well, we'll put a link to that in the show notes for sure. That's that's great. I think uh, we were even this morning talking about trying to get it in as a uh, part of the uh, GitHub samples on uh, Corona right. Labs. Yeah. So that'll be. I think that's would be a great addition because you already got Corona. Uh, Corona what was it, uh, uh, Corona Cannon. Corona Cannon. Yeah, out there, and so something like this would be great. A, sm a smaller uh, example. Because I know Corona can pretty in depth. As for Bluetooth plugin, I was very busy, uh, not enough time to write documentation. But once I make it, hopefully maybe tomorrow, I will release Android version. Okay. That's that's still in the queue for processing, though, right? So what we're saying, in that uh, you're gonna release it as an official plugin. It will be released here for people. Yeah, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steven, what are, what are you working on? I know you, you we, we talked a little bit before the show started. All right. Uh, a few months ago, I previewed some plugins, and one of them was Lua Proc. Yeah. Which is for, for threading, basically. That's in the queue. And I'm just waiting to hear, unless, unless I hear something's broken, it's coming out soon. Uh, I've got updated docs here. And then simultaneously with that, I've got another one called Serialize, which is uh, bindings to, let me share this. Okay, you see that? Yes. All right, there's three open source modules for serializing data that I have bound so far. I might find more later. Two of them are by authors, the Lua authors. Uh, struct is by Roberto, which lets you bind structured data like you would, you would find in C for communicating, for example, with C libraries, which I'm beginning to do. 
And so I, I made this as preparation for that. There's uh, that and LPAC, which is by Luis, another one of the Lua authors. And they, these two both, I mean, they're similar, they're just down to preference largely. And one more is this one called Marshall, which is for arbitrary data, like a table. So it would be sort of an alternative to JSON, but it, it would encode it in binary form. And in the samples that will come with, with the demo, I, I, I'm using this uh, to encode some functions and send them from one thread to another. So you can build, you can build some functions and send them between each other. Normally, you can only send strings, numbers, and booleans just because otherwise you would be stomping on memory potentially. And when you do that with threads, it gets really nasty. So these two, these two modules, the Lua proc and serialize, are in some sense meant to complement one another. I, I haven't tested this, but the speed, speed also might be what the speed might be compared to a JSON encoding and decoding. But I know, I know that's come up in the past on the forums where people were having speed issues encoding. So those, those are on their way. And I've got some others that are, um, I've mentioned this one on the forum. It's a VLC. For the, um, excuse me, for the uh, marshalling serialized yes. module, do you have examples of uh, how uh, the structure looks like? Encoded. Right, and then for any one of them in particular, or? Maybe for all of them, if you have. Okay, well, well this is the, this would be a C struct. So you have a character and four ints, and you would give it this format. Uh, all of these are explained up here. Mm -hmm. So byte, int, 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 int. And you can build, you can build these up using Lua. So for instance, string wrap. Uh, I think they, sh the, ex the examples are from, uh, from the original page. I just adapted them a little bit. So, but there, there are also tests that come with it. And those are quite good as stocks because they, Roberto tests everything. <laughs> uh, so, so this is an example of taking a string and packing it and then unpacking it back. Um, so this is a, uh, I should perhaps have some something else in front of me to do this. But the, my tests, or, or my uh, not tests, but uh, my sample program has. And there's also a format called CBOR that depends on struct, and I added it. So there's actually four serialization formats here. <laughs> but this one isn't officially part of the library. And it's this. Sorry about the background noise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what is, are you real, like super hungry or something? No, there's a truck outside. <laughs> this is what LPAC looks like when it's encoded. So this is an encoding true and the number 12. And this is decoded as normal. And here it's encoding. Wait, 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 wait. That first big string is true? Apparently. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> OK, go on. Sorry. It might, I forget. It might be true in the count, but I think it is true. And that this is coding these numbers, string Lua, more numbers. Here, further numbers. And here it's encoding pi. And, Number decoding them, uh, Marshall. Uh, they're all binary strings, so it's. I don't know how exciting it is to look at, but. 
And so what's the, uh, just, I mean, I, I sort of get the sense of what this is for, but what is this for? <laughs> it's for, <laughs> it's for a, a couple of needs. Uh, one is what I mentioned that you can, you can communicate stuff that's more complicated than strings and numbers across threads. Like you can't send a table between them because, you know, what if you change a table on one end and then you would be, you, do, you don't want to be messing with memory on two sides of a thread unless you really have controls in place for it. And, then, and this is so that I can communicate back and forth with C, block, C libraries. That, that's the second use of it, yeah. And, uh, and also just to, just to save data if you want. You could use it instead of, instead of uh, JSON to do that. But, but it's not, that wasn't really its primary purpose. Gotcha. But it, it can do it. Okay. And then you said you had something about VLC? Yeah. Yeah, I'll show that one here. So this is, you know, <laughs> this is that's not a very exciting uh, video, though. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I'm, I'm using the tests from the Fiora test suite. So this is part of it. <laughs> it's just loading it into something. It's not doing anything in a native uh, graphical element. It's connected to a display object. So if this were smaller, you could you could drag it around on, in within Corona itself. It wouldn't just be in a fixed location, and you could you could put it in groups and all that. Oh, cool. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, have you, you? Can you uh, choose specific frames, pose, and that sort of stuff? Not yet. I haven't. I haven't. But it's all there in the API. I just haven't done, haven't done it yet. Cool. Also, one crucial thing: can you have transparency? You should. Yeah, you should be able to. It's a video. I think. Yes, image. No, not this kind of transparency. Oh. Transparency in the video codec. Ah, I haven't. Well, I haven't put all the codecs to their faces, but I can. <laughs> you make a video object with transparency. You can uh, use this as highly packed, highly quality packed sprite sheets. Basically, that's what many developers ah. do. Okay. Well, I'll have to try it out. <laughs> And, and have this you is working on on uh, which platforms? It's currently working on Windows and OS X. And is I, that simulator and desktop, or just simulator? Both. You man. I'm 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 Doesn't not sure really how to mean. package it, but because it's got a lot of DLLs and stuff, so. <laughs> so it's using DLLs. It's not using like native extension of or. Right. Directly. Oh, I see. Yeah. Which, which might have some problems if you want to use an MP4 because of the licensing, but if you want to use other formats, I think. So no plans for iOS and Android then, right? I need to figure out how to build it. <laughs> the, the VLC build process is kind of esoteric. I see. Well, once I can yeah. figure out that, I'll do it. But I just, I, I'm, it's just a huge project, so it's got a lot of moving parts, and, and I haven't, yet figured that out, but I, I want to look at that, yeah. Yeah, but that's a nice, but that's a, it's a nice demo of something that, I mean, you've come this far, right? So it's, it's interesting yeah, as, on its own. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 I'm from Oregon. Are you trying to tell me you're a Ducks fan? Because I'm, 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 I'm from OSU, so. I used to live in Washington. I don't know. <laughs> Taking offense at this. No, I don't. <laughs> so, so then basically we've got uh, Lua Proc, um, and then serial, some serialization stuff, and then VLC. And so it sounds like Lua Proc's in the queue. Serialization is where, where is that? It's like in the in the. It's queue. also in the queue. It, okay. It's probably going to come up the same time. So. Okay, and then VLC is still very much in development. Right. This this one is getting there. 
I have GIF loading here. Uh, it's also, it's got image loading, image saving, and some basic image resizing. This is kind of a slimmer version of the other image library I showed before. I might submit this one pretty soon. And this is separate from the VLC? Yeah, that's okay. a GIF. So. Okay. Just a random question about LuaProc. Mm -hmm. Since it's truly concurrent, have you uh, done any experiments manipulating um, display objects from two different? Um, you're not. You're not allowed to to load a display object in the, a new proc. It's, ah. It. You can. I mean, Corona doesn't even provide the library for me to access in the first place. So, but okay. uh, you can use the Lua, the stock Lua libraries, and I, I found that some libraries will load just fine. And I think if you I'm designing these th these new ones I'm making where possible to target it so that you can load several instances in different threads. I, I guess I'll, at some point I'll probably put out some docs on how to do that. Well, if you can access the uh, just pure, you know, like Lua objects, then that's fine. Right. Like, like in this case, I could load a, a large image in another thread as bytes and send those across that you could, that you could then use. Yeah, I'm thinking about how to use this for like uh, simulations and such, where you need to break up the work into multiple threads. Right. I, th I think uh, Lulaproc is pretty low level right now, but I think as time goes on, it could, it could probably grow uh, uh, more more friendly layer on top. Yeah, well, low level is fine for me. All right, just random question there. Okay. Uh, and this, there was a there's a library called called a memory bitmap that Vlad released recently without much fanfare. Let's, it lets you uh, set pixels. So you can set and get pixels, and then you can also feed that to effects as a, as a texture. And I've, I've adapted the code and added some things to that. So this, this for example, is a big me memory bitmap, and this is a smaller one. So you can, I have, I have it so you can set bytes within the bitmap. And that's what I'm using in the, the image library I just showed. So I can load an image as bytes and set them into a bitmap. Uh, and then from there, you could, you could just do normal drawing on it. So I'm hoping to, to make a pull request and get this integrated into the, into the plugin. If not, I'll just release it on its own. But. Interesting, and that would help us do, do things like that. Would give you this this ability, so you could load an image into the bitmap. That that isn't there right now. You just oh, okay. get set pixels. So, Got and it. you can you can make a brush like this. This is <laughs> you probably wouldn't do exactly this, but uh, I added some smaller features along with that for setting red, green, or blue channels individually. And, Gotcha. But if you wanted to create a, I, 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 I can understand the, I can wrap my head around a brush. So if I want to create an image, a brush from an image, then I could do that. Right. Which, and, and you can get that. I also added, you can get the bytes back out of it. So you can feed them back into other APIs. Hmm. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> Man, I feel slow now. I, I tell you what, I am. I am uh, always continually uh, impressed, amazed, uh, honored to 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 have you guys on this this uh, show because I feel like there's just so many great things. It's it's just I, I just get excited. I get I've got excited. some I've got some number crunching stuff down the line too. I don't have anything ready to show. Number crunching stuff like what? Like eat money? Oh, like, like in a, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, like you just a, a big array, a numerical array that you can you can do an operation like sine, cosine, et cetera, on all the operations in, in series. And rather than doing it all in Lua, it will just kind of blast through it and, and see. And I'm going to try to make it take advantage of libraries like Accelerate on, on Apple side, and maybe some of the DirectX map on Windows. And so you like, are, are they like pre-computing values? Is that what we're talking about? Are you like kind of doing that ahead of time? Not necessarily pre-computing, but it can take advantage of hardware to, to mm. do it. And uh, it, just, it just won't be going through all the, 
the Lua layer, which is, a, which is not ideal for number crunching for huge batches of numbers, but. Gotcha. So kind of, kind of go out there almost like a math co-processor sort of thing, right? Go out and make the hardware, do some crunching and get your, get your numbers and then let the Lua program work with those numbers. You know, crunching a whole bitmap or something. And it's, <laughs> I've tried doing that in Lua and it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, well, let's leave it there. We've got, uh, we, we talked about Game Kit. We talked about uh, Ed's Eat tool and the fact that the pricing goes up in one week. Uh, we looked at uh, some of the new features in Eat. We talked about Sergey's Not Tetris, uh, which I'll have links in the show notes to all of these things. Uh, Steven showed us the Lua proc uh, and serialization and VLC and loading images and bitmaps and we also had scott wrote rules scott harrison stuff uh for tic-tac-toe and touch id so that's a lot for one day i think that's a good show so we'll be back here uh in two weeks to do another corona geek and i am also working on uh, getting our after dark uh, video posted which we did last wednesday which was a great session all by itself uh Batum, pulled the curtain back on some of the things that he has done uh, with his uh, Elite Games brand and uh, and everything that he's done on Steam. Uh, so you're going to want to catch that for sure. We'll post the whole thing as a full episode. It's a two-hour hangout, but we'll also bust it up into, uh, I think I have eight, seven or eight videos um, that are all of them worth watching. So look for that coming in the next week, and, and we'll see you again. Uh, until then, happy coding. And uh, whatever I usually say, right? <laughs> <laughs> you blew your mind right out on that show. Blew my mind. <laughs>